Hey Frontline, it's Val again. Uh, I'm here to talk about perinatal HIV transmission, that is mother to child transmission. Uh, and perinatal uh, is confusing. Um, the root words here, peri, means around. So like a periscope is something that can scope or can look all around, right? Um, and natal is uh, involves birth. So this is perinatal um, is transmission uh, that happens around the time of birth. So this topic discusses ways that we can prevent HIV from being passed on around the time of birth. That's both before, during, and after. Um, so you need to know that no child has to be born with HIV. Um, HIV positive parents can have HIV negative kids and have been doing so since the beginning of the epidemic. Um, there's a lot of sort of misinformation in the community about what, about um, HIV positive people uh, being able to parent or have negative kids, um, and they absolutely can. And with advances in treatment, um, people are living the lifespan that they would have lived b before HIV. So um, the sort of, you know, how long are you going to be able to be alive to watch this kid um, is, that's another piece of misinformation that um, folks living with HIV are just going to die immediately, so why would you have kids? So, um, you know, we want to help support people who are HIV positive in making these decisions with good information, not with bad information. So. Before anti-HIV drugs existed, only 25% of babies, or one out of four, um, were uh, were HIV positive, born HIV positive, who had HIV positive moms. Um, so HIV positive moms, one out of four times, would give birth to a child who was positive. Um, uh, which, if you would believe the sort of schoolyard rumor, you would think that it was four out of four babies, or 100% of babies were born HIV positive. But this is before HIV drugs, and it was one in four, or 25%. After meds, less than 2% of babies born to HIV positive moms were HIV positive. Um, and uh, with um, the sort of, uh, you know, access to care that I'm about to talk about, um, it doesn't have to be any. Um, so, it's important that each person um, has a plan that's going to work for them, and so these people have different needs. Like someone who just found out their HIV status as part of prenatal care versus someone who has known their status for years and is planning for pregnancy or birth, like those two people have very different needs, um, and so it's important that the plan reflects them um, and what it is that they're going for. Um, we do have guidelines for this, um, and they're in the same place as HIV treatment guidelines. Um, HIV ATIS, um, HIVATIS.org, um, and the one that we're looking for for this is called Guidelines for the Use of Anti-HIV Meds and Ways to Prevent Perinatal Infections. Um, so just a quick review of transmission. HIV is only transmitted through four body fluids, blood, semen, vaginal fluids, and breast milk. And the ones that are relevant here are blood, um, which is found in the birth canal, vaginal fluids, also found in the birth canal, um, and breast milk af after birth. Um, exposure, exposure to semen usually is something that we worry about before someone has even conceived, um, and so exposure to semen that has HIV in it is a risk for the mother, but it's actually not a risk for the child. Um, and uh, the, so the, the womb uh, where a baby grows is actually really well protected from HIV and other germs. Uh, the sort of, uh, I want to say like, you know, the, the gift wrapping that the baby comes in does a really good job of keeping out other stuff and the umbilical cord is a really great filter. Um, so the risk of HIV transmission to children comes from blood and vaginal fluids in the birth canal and breastfeeding after birth. Um, so here are some scenarios, right? If both 
mom and dad are positive, there's no, or I'm sorry, if both mom and dad are negative, there's no HIV risk there. So we're going to leave those aside for the moment. So positive mom, positive dad, uh, risk of reinfecting both. Um, you know, mom can reinfect dad if there's, um, you know, sort of... Uh, body fluid exchange. Mom can reinfect dad, dad can reinfect mom. Um, they both will have HIV infections, but um, there's no, there's, it's not that the virus becomes super or stronger or like radioactive if it's a reinfection. It's just that there's more HIV in the body than there used to be. Um, and it's good in general to keep that away. There's also the risk of reinfection leads to the risk of sharing HIV resistance, which means that if, um, you know, mom, the virus that's in mom's body is H is resistant to AZT, for instance, then it's possible that that virus um, if dad is exposed to it, then dad won't be able to use AZT either. Um, that's the resistance, um, and that's that goes along with reinfection. So there's a risk of reinfecting on both directions there. Um, if mom is positive and dad is negative, there's a risk of infecting dad. Um, and if mom is negative and dad is positive, there's a risk of infecting mom. So it's not just the child that we care about, but also the sort of relationship between these two folks. But if, um, you know, either this uh, sort, of, sort of seroconcordant couple, both folks being positive, or either of these serodiscordant couples, that is one positive, one negative, if they decide that they want to have a kid together, more power to them, and that can definitely happen. Um, but we want to make sure that we bring up the risks um, involved. So in terms of HIV testing, um, all newborns share their mom's immune system, um, and that means that a standard HIV antibody test will come up positive in that baby if the mom is positive, even if the baby isn't. Um, and the baby starts to develop their own immune system at about 18 months. So for the first couple years of its life, we want to regularly test the child just to make sure. Um, so here's some bottom line stuff and I would, for more information on the sort of uh, um, crunchy, crunchy detailed um, information on treatment, I would re highly recommend going to HIVATIS.org. Um, but so prenatal testing is crucial. Um, we want there to be coordinated care between the obstetrician and the primary care doctor. Um, meds are recommended because they bring the viral load down, but a plan has to be made for each individual. Um, although universally, Sestiva is not recommended in the first trimester, um, and so that can often be a drug that if somebody is planning for pregnancy, even before they're pregnant, if someone's planning for pregnancy, a provider might take them off of Sestiva and switch up the regimen that they're on. Um, it's recommended to get CD4 and viral load counts every two to three months during pregnancy. Um, bring down viral load with meds immediately before birth. Um, uh, so that is, as someone goes into labor, um, often folks get placed on an IV drip that has HIV meds in it. Um, the idea being that we keep down the virus that's in the blood and the vaginal fluids um, preparing for birth. Um, C-sections are encouraged rather than um, vaginal delivery. Um, infant formula in place of breast milk and then ongoing care and testing after birth. Uh, that's that's the quick overview. Um, I will talk to you next time.